Hey, what's up guys, Jakey here. Today we're gonna to be going over the best settings for the G Pro Super Lite 2. No matter what game you are playing, whether it's Valorant, Overwatch, CS, these are the settings that you wanna be using for your Super Lite 2 in order to get the best performance and the least amount of input lag for your mouse. So let's actually first get started with the physical aspect of the mouse. Straight out of the box, you get the stock skates on the G Pro Super Lite 2, and I have never been a fan of the stock skates. The skates are super thin and scratchy, so the first thing I would recommend is actually swapping out the stock skates on the G Pro Super Lite 2. Now, the aftermarket skates that you choose is completely personal preference, but I use the Tiger Ice V2 skates. These are on the faster side. If you want more of a controlled experience similar to the stock skates, you can go for something like core pads. And yeah, those are two very solid skates that you really can't go wrong with. Obviously, there's a ton of other ones that you can choose like the obsidian skates as well, but I will leave that up to you guys if you want to do more research and decide for yourself. Next thing you want to make sure you do is actually make sure that you're placing the dongle in the correct spot. Some people actually take out this little dongle here and they just plug it straight into their computer, which is not what you want to do. This introduces a lot of input lag and latency. Taking out the small little dongle is mainly for if you want to take the mouse traveling on a laptop for example, but if you're using this mouse at home you definitely want to make sure you're plugging it into the wired extender to get it as close to your mouse as possible. And this will just make sure that the wireless signal is traveling the shortest distance to your mouse, meaning that you're getting the fastest response time. Next, let's talk about the accessories that come with the G Pro Super Lite 2. Logitech provides grip tape for the G Pro Super Lite 2. I know a lot of people actually didn't realize that there's grip tape that comes in the box, but if you are someone that has really dry hands or you just find that the grip of the Super Lite 2 is slipping a lot from your hand, Try out using these grip tapes. These can help a lot with getting a better grip on the mouse and could improve your aim as a result. I personally don't use grip tape because I don't really feel a need for it, but obviously this is very subjective. Some people love grip tape, so if you want, you can try it out. Next is gonna be the PTFE puck that comes with the Super Lite 2. If you're buying aftermarket skates, they should come with a little section to replace this puck as well. This is once again, personal preference. I personally just use the puck without any skates on it. Some people don't use any puck at all on the Super Lite 2 so that their mouse is a little bit lighter. Personally, I don't really see a need to do this. I think keeping the puck in makes the mouse a lot more balanced in terms of the weight distribution. But like I said, this is personal preference so you can experiment. Having the PTFE puck in makes it so that there's a little bit more friction on on the bottom of the mouse, which may make your glide feel a little bit slower. Whereas if you use the puck without the PTFE on the bottom, there's less friction, which means you will get a faster glide feel. Okay, now let's actually get into the software for the G Pro Super Lite 2. G Pro Super Lite 2 uses Logitech G Hub to change all of the settings, and I will leave a link to Logitech G Hub as well as a link to those skates that I mentioned earlier in the description below. If you guys actually don't want to download Logitech G Hub, you can instead download the Logitech Onboard Memory Manager. So if you just Google Logitech OMM, it should be the first link right here, as you can see, Onboard Memory Manager. And this will basically just download a portable EXE file so that you don't have to install anything onto your computer. If you are more minimalistic and you want to keep your computer free of any extra software, this is definitely the way to go. I personally just have Logitech G Hub downloaded, so we're just going to launch that up right now. And this is where you can change the settings of your G Pro Super Lite 2. First things first, I just go into the settings here and I turn off the always start after logging in just because I don't want this program launching with my Windows. And also down here in updates, you wanna make sure that you're on the latest version. So you just click check for update and make sure that you are completely updated to the latest version of the software. And then personally for analytics, I go down here and just turn this off because I don't wanna send any data to Logitech. And that's about everything I do in the settings. Next, by default, onboard memory mode is gonna be off. So this is what you're basically gonna see. You wanna click into the mouse here and I have just made a custom preset, which I recommend you do as well. Just click on this little plus button up here to create a profile. And then now you could just rename it to whatever you want. So after you have your little custom profile here, now we can actually dive into the settings. Starting with DPI, DPI is mostly personal preference. Now on paper, it is true that higher DPI such as 1600 compared to like 400 DPI, for example, will have less pixel skipping and will feel a little bit smoother as well, but that is mostly negligible. That slightly increased smoothness will not make a difference in-game. Like it won't be the difference between hitting a headshot and not hitting a headshot. 
So for the most part, DPI is personal preference, but if smoothness and pixel skipping is something you are concerned about, then I would recommend you at least use 800 DPI. So yeah, your DPI really just determines how fast your mouse is on the desktop, as well as the buy menu in Valorant, for example. Those are really the only times you're really going to feel your DPI and also when you're opening up the minimap to ping in Valorant. So just use whatever is comfortable for you on the desktop because really the only thing that matters is going to be your eDPI which depends on your in-game sensitivity. So for example if I played on 800 DPI with 0.3 sensitivity in-game that comes out to an effective DPI of 240 and if I wanted to replicate that same sensitivity on 1600 DPI for example I would just divide the 0.3 in-game by 2 making it 0 0.15 at 1600 DPI, which comes out to the same effective DPI of 240. So as you can see, it really doesn't matter what DPI you use because you can get the same sensitivity no matter what DPI you're on, just by changing your in-game sensitivity. So I have this set to one slot because I just use one sensitivity and I don't use any DPI shifts or anything like that, and I play on 800. Moving on to wireless report rate, you want to use at least 1000 Hz polling rate, but there's really no need to use 4000 or 8000. And if you're curious about this, Optimum Tech made a very good video explaining why anything above 2000 Hz polling rate is negligible and you really won't notice any difference. The only thing that playing on higher polling rate does is it stresses out your CPU more and it also just drains the battery faster on your mouse. So there's really no noticeable upsides to playing on these high polling rates. Another thing is playing on these higher polling rates in certain games such as Fortnite will actually make your game stutter because a lot of engines are not optimized for high polling rate mice. So if you're playing a certain game that doesn't support high polling rate and you use high polling rate, it will actually make your FPS stutter in game, which is why I recommend a sweet spot of 2000 Hertz if you're chasing the best performance while also wanting to save on battery life and make sure that your game is running as smooth as possible, 2000 seems to be the sweet spot. But honestly, if you wanted to play on 1000 Hertz, that's completely fine as well. For the hero sensor calibration, I recommend not touching this. This is if you're moving from another mouse and you want to match the DPI. There's really no need for this to calibrate. You just want to leave it on the default and any DPI variants you will get used to after playing with the new mouse. Another really quick thing we want to make sure we change while we're here is you want to click on open windows mouse settings, go down and click on additional mouse settings. Inside of mouse properties we want to go over to pointer options and make sure that we uncheck enhance pointer precision and this will turn off any windows induced mouse acceleration which will affect your aim in games that don't have raw input on. So it's always good practice just to turn this off. All right and with all of that out of the way you're pretty much done. You don't really have to touch any of these advanced settings here. Lift off distance, I always leave it on medium and I don't touch anything inside of here. So those are just the main things you want to change inside of the software is your DPI as well as your polling rate. Next, we're going to hit the little cog down here to open up our device settings. For gaming surface mode, you're going to want to leave this on unless you're having issues with your sensor. For example, some people using the G Pro Super Lite 2 on a glass mouse pad might experience some issues such as the mouse spinning out. So if you're experiencing any issues like that, like your mouse isn't tracking on your mouse pad or you're having spin outs, then you can try turning this off. But for most people, leaving gaming surface mode on is the way to go. And for Light Force Switch, I leave this on optical only just to make sure you're getting the max performance at all times. If you're concerned about battery life, you can try out hybrid, but honestly, this setting is pretty negligible in terms of battery life, so I just recommend leaving it on optical only always. All right, and after all of that's done, now what you wanna do is you want to turn on onboard memory mode. So just click on here and then click on slot one and replace it with the profile that you just changed, which is our desktop profile. So I'm just gonna click that. And now this profile is saved onto the memory of our mouse, meaning that we don't need to have the Logitech G Hub software open at all times. We can close out of this software and all of the settings that we just changed is gonna be saved onto our mouse. You can make sure that it's on by going back to the main menu. And if this is lit up blue and it says onboard memory mode on, then you're good to go. And now we can just close out of the Logitech G Hub software. And that is pretty much it guys. Those are the best settings for the G Pro Super Lite 2 in order to get the best performance and least amount of input lag. I hope this video helps you out. And if it does, make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.